Supervision for the improvement of instruction. Supervision in education is an extremely important part of ensuring that all students receive a quality education. In this class, I learned the ultimate purposes of supervision, which are to gain more knowledge about your school and practice, have a continuous plan to diagnose, prescribe, and evaluate current practices in order to achieve more learning for more learners in more ways more of the time. During the last seven weeks, I met with my principal, Mrs. Compantello, and my colleague, Miss Regina, who welcomed me into her classroom to work with her and the first grade students. I have learned a lot about supervision, specifically taking a closer look at the history of supervision, developing a knowledge base for teaching, formative and summative assessment techniques, doing walkthrough observations, conducting a mock observation, providing feedback and engaging in professional reflections and responsibilities. Each week, my CRLA gave me a deeper understanding of supervision from many different perspectives. During my meeting with my colleague and my principal, we discussed various models of supervision and how these models have evolved throughout history. These models are clinical supervision, Hunter model, differentiated supervision, Danielson model and Marzano model. My colleague explained that in the beginning of her career, teacher observations were not as detailed as they are now. Most of her observations reflected the clinical model and were narratives that explained the lesson and listed recommendations for her to improve. The various models of supervision that my principal used were the Effective Learning Environment Observation Tool, Elliot, the Marzano model, which she expressed is very comprehensive and long, as well as the Danielson model. She currently uses a modified version of the Marzano model. In discussions with my colleague, it became obvious that the current supervision plan may at times be too comprehensive and that it can lead teachers to try to accomplish too much in one lesson. Also, it brought up the question of whether recommendations are actually implemented. It was interesting to see a common thread develop each time we met that focused on peer collaboration. Both me and my colleague reflected on how we truly valued the interactions we had during post-conference meetings, especially those that related to sharing effective teaching practices. These reflections brought about another series of questions. Is the current supervision plan effective enough? Does it need to be modified? Is there a better way? An alternative supervision plan that aligns with the positive interactions we had during the last seven weeks and in our careers is peer coaching. Our mission at St. Athanasius Catholic Academy is to provide a safe and caring environment, foster a sound academic education, and instill a solid sense of Catholic identity. When reflecting with my colleague on the walkthrough and formal observations, we decided additional collaboration among teachers is needed to achieve these goals. Therefore, teachers should be provided with opportunities to effectively collaborate. Peer coaching will foster the goals in the mission statement and bridge the gap for collaboration. To implement peer coaching, I will pair two teachers who have a desire to participate. I will engage the principal in the implementation plan so that it is supported at a higher level. The benefit of peer coaching is that it facilitates the sharing of knowledge and work practices. It provides real-time ongoing feedback on current practices. It enables collaboration and communication and improves collegiality. As part of the execution of the plan, paired teachers will share resources and observation data, take turns being coached and coaching, set goals and objectives, and meet bi-weekly. To evaluate the effectiveness of the plan, there will be formal observation reports, annual performance reports, formative and summative evaluations, and an evaluation of student achievement data. Based on data analysis of the middle school, math is an area of weakness where peer coaching could help, as evident by the test scores for each of the four levels in both the sixth and seventh grades, there is a need for most students to improve their test scores. If peer coaching is implemented, teachers will gain knowledge, learn new skills, practice and reflect on their pedagogy, build leadership skills, and implement best teaching practices for math, which will lead to higher student achievement, more learning for more learners in more ways, more of the time.
A special thank you goes out to Mrs. Compantello, Principal, Miss Regina and the first grade class, Sister Marianne Jacobs, Sister Amigia Kushner, Dr. Donovue, and fellow classmates of EGUG 747.